All right, next up we have Harrison Harnish. He's um, an engineer at Respondly, which is one of the production apps that we featured on our 1.0 website. So my name's Harrison, and I'm a software engineer at Respondly. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about integrating Meteor with Elasticsearch. So let's dive in. So here's a search pattern that some of you might be using in, in your apps if you've got search uh, built in. Um, it starts with, starts with a text input box, and as you're typing in this box, um, you're going to be up, you're, you're going to be resubscribing to a data, or you're going to resubscribing to a publication. And in, in, in this case, um, we're subscribing to something called query, and it takes one argument called query string, which is essentially just the search input text. So on the server side, we're going to do a regex search on our collection, and um, this basically just returns the data reactively based off of some regex input. And then on the client, we're going to get back data that Meteor is going to uh, render reactively. But we can build a better search experience. So the first step is to keep your documents in sync. So as your collection changes, we're going to be indexing that collection into Elasticsearch in, into uh, the equivalent in Elasticsearch called an index. And we do this for changes, additions, and we also delete records. So let's go through that same flow, but instead we're going to use Elasticsearch. So on the client, you do the exact same thing. Your, your client code doesn't have to change. You can still subscribe to the same uh, publication. But on the back end, we differ a little bit. So we're, we're going to pass in, let's say we've got uh, a query string, and we're going to pass it into Elasticsearch. And what we're going to get back is a, in, an array of IDs. And these IDs are going to be sorted by what Elasticsearch calls their, um, their ranking. And because we've mapped the data to the ID, we're going to pass that into the collection and do a find on, on the array of IDs. And this is going to be really fast because we're going to be putting our load on Elasticsearch to do the search. And again, our, our, our client code doesn't have to change. So what are the advantages to doing something like this? Well, you get Lucene query syntax, which is super powerful because you get to boost terms, exclude and require terms, and basically anything you would expect a traditional search engine to do. You can offload your search load onto Elasticsearch cluster, which is more, tuned, more finely tuned towards search. And there's support for many different languages, which is a problem in itself. So I'm going to do a quick demo. So I'm going to go to the Respondly app inside of the Find tab. And let's say I want to find all the conversations that contain Meteor. So we get quite a few conversations, as expected. Uh, let's do something a little more interesting. Let's say potentially contain the term Meteor, but must contain worldwide. And let's boost that search term so all of, the tweet, or all of the conversations containing worldwide surface to the top. Cool. So now we can go through and we can, we can continue on this list. These are all ordered by Elasticsearch ranking. And there's millions of conversations that have been indexed. So we're, we're searching through quite a bit of data. And, and you can keep going because you guys have been pretty active tweeting about Meteor Worldwide. So again, my name is Harrison. I'm a software engineer at Respondly. And if you want to be working on Meteor stuff every day, we're hiring. So come talk to us afterwards. Thank you. Do I have a demo? Yeah, like, oh, slow, but... I, um, the question was, do we have a demo comparing the Elasticsearch versus the, uh, the MongoDB version? I, I don't have a demo offhand, no. Sorry. Yes? How does the 
does um, keeping the documents in sync with Elasticsearch work? So the question was, how does keeping the documents in sync with Elasticsearch work? Um, so in production, we have a queuing system where any time our collection changes, we, th we throw that under the queue. And then we have workers that are listening to that queue. And um, there's, there's a few different, it kind of maps to the way that the, the collection wor would work, add, change, delete. And we take that list, uh, we take that list of changes and we just process each one. And we're basically reading from MongoDB and then doing the index or the remove. Any other questions? Um, did you try synchronizing data to Elasticsearch with local families? Like, there's this thing called Rebus or Rebus, that, but like, we use local families of the local database to fill in the Elasticsearch. So the question was, um, why didn't we use something like Rivers, or, um, or have we explored that option? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, we have explored the option of using MongoDB rivers, and uh, we found them to be really difficult to use and kind of flaky. Um, sometimes they actually would just completely hang up, um, and for no reason and not really a good way to tell whether they've, they've hung up or not. So, uh, Without getting too technical, we have a wrapper around collections, and anytime we add, change, or delete, we're, we're um, adding that to our, our queuing system, which is essentially doing what the river did, but in a more reliable way. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.